Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. The boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. This message was from the Lord. Before I made you in your mother's body, I knew you. Before you were born, I chose you for a special work. I chose you to be a prophet to the nations. Then Jeremiah said, But Lord, all-powerful, I don't know how to speak. I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. You must go everywhere I send you. You must say everything I tell you to say. Don't be afraid of anyone. I am with you, and I will protect you. This is the message from the Lord. (coughs) Then the Lord reached out His hand and touched my mouth. The Lord said to me, Jeremiah, I am putting my words in your mouth. Today I have put you in charge of nations and kingdoms. You will pull up and tear down. You will destroy and overthrow. You will build up and plant. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began to speak to them. He said, while you heard me reading these words just now, the words were coming true. All the people said good things about Jesus. They were amazed at the beautiful words Jesus spoke. The people said, How can he speak like this? He is only Joseph's son, isn't he? Jesus said to them, I know that you will tell me the old saying, Doctor, heal yourself. You want to say, we heard about some things that you did in Capernaum. Do these same things 
here in your own hometown. Then Jesus said, I tell you the truth. A prophet is not accepted in his own hometown. What I say is true. During the time of Elijah, it did not rain in Israel for three and a half years. There was no food anywhere in the whole country. There were many widows in Israel during that time. But Elijah was sent to none of those widows. Elijah was sent only to a widow in Zarephath, a town in Sidon. And there, many people living with leprosy, living in Israel, during the time of the prophet Elisha. But none of those people were healed. The only one was Naaman. And Naaman was from the country of Syria, not from Israel. All the people in the synagogue heard these things. They became very, very angry. The people got up and forced Jesus to go out of town. Their town was built on a hill. They brought Jesus to the edge of the hill. The people wanted to throw him off. But Jesus walked through the middle of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Have you ever known any famous people? Have you ever gotten some enjoyment out of dropping celebrity names? In my years, I've been able to number a professional basketball star, a famous actor, a congressman who later became general secretary of the National Council of Churches, I could list them among the people I called friends. We like that link with celebrity. Sporting goods stores, which used to actually sell equipment to play sports, have become sports apparel stores. For a high price, you can buy a football jersey with your favorite quarterback's name across the back, bringing you a closer connection with that player and with his fame. I notice that the local news anchors always refer to one wildly popular singer as Why a Missing's Taylor Swift. It's as if we all own a little piece of her fame because she's from here. And of course, she would warmly greet each one of us if we saw her at the mall, wouldn't she? Somehow, those connections make us stand out from the crowd, at least in our own minds. In today's Gospel, Jesus, the hometown boy who made good and has become famous, returns to preach in his home congregation. And they are happy and excited to hear what this son of the congregation has to say until he says it. Then, they're unhappy with him. Who does he think he is, Mr. Hotshot Famous Rabbi? We've known him since he was a little boy. He's Joe and Mary's kid. Just who does he think he is? They're upset with him. 
so upset with him that they try to kill him. Preaching can be a dangerous profession unless you're always ready to tell people not the truth, but rather what they want to hear. What I find disturbing about political campaigns, particularly the current one, is the willingness of some candidates to tell us what we want to hear, particularly those who appeal to our dark side and give us permission to indulge the darker parts of our human nature. Beware of them. Throw them out. Keep them out. Kill them and their children. Those who are poor are lazy. America is for us, not them. And by the way, I'm a Christian. That hometown crowd that comes to hear Jesus wants something from Him. We've heard what you have done. We've heard about the healings and the miracles. Do them now. Do them here. Do them for your hometown friends and neighbors. Jesus crushes their hopes by telling them how God has acted in favor of the outsider, the foreigner. If the world is divided into us and them, then God stands with them. And for that, they will try to kill you. Wherever you go in this world, you will find us and them. And you will be told by the us's just how unworthy, how undeserving, how dangerous they are. But read your Bible, and you will find that Jesus is always crossing that line between us and them in order to touch them. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus not only lifts up a Samaritan, one of them, as the one who is doing the work of the kingdom, he is also responding to the question of a lawyer who wants to draw a very small circle around the question of, who is my neighbor? As we await the coming of the kingdom of God, as surely as we await the coming of spring after last week's blizzard, we need to understand what Jesus is saying and that the saying is fulfilled here, now, today. A few years ago, Bette Midler had a popular hit song called From a Distance. The main line of the song repeated again and again that God is watching us from a distance. The idea was that God keeps His eye on the world, but only from a safe distance. And life's problems wouldn't seem nearly so bad if we looked at things from a distance too. But God is not watching us from a distance, uninvolved, nor are the struggles of our own lives and of the world viewed from a distance. They are real, they are close, 
and they affect us deeply. God is not watching us from a distance. God comes near to us in Jesus. And today the Scriptures are fulfilled as He comes among us in water and word, in bread and wine. Today the world comes alive in your life. Today God draws near to us. And there is a word for us from the Lord. Go. Live. I am not distant, but I am with you. And I am for you. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Giving thanks for God's great gifts, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Make your church a prophetic voice for the voiceless, a bold witness of love to the neighbor, and a force for hope in all the world. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal Church, for Trinity Deaf, and for the congregation of Calvary Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard all creatures that fly, swim, creep, and walk upon the earth. Defend and preserve threatened lands and waters. We pray especially for the residents of Flint, Michigan, who seek clean water, and for all who continue to cover, recover from our winter storm. Lord, in your mercy. Stir leaders of all nations to compassion and righteous anger in the face of injustice and lead them to rejoice in the truth that all people are beloved children of the Most High. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant patience, endurance, healing, and hope to all those in any need. Give strength to those living with addiction and comfort to those who have lost jobs, homes, health, and hope. We pray especially for Bonnie, Catherine, Theda, Carol, Bob, and Ron, and all those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the ministries of this congregation 
We pray especially for our congregation's many committees and ministry teams. Curb our impatience, our envy, and our insistence on our own way, and give us patience, kindness, and love in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed who have come to know the fulfillment of your promises. Strengthen us in faith, hope, and love until we join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your love and healing, O God, we commend to you all for whom we pray knowing that you will hear and answer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the Lord's peace. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his followers, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died. Christ is risen finish. We believe Christ will come down again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awake your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Lord Jesus. All power and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table. 
feast on God's abundant life for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. (coughs) We thank You, O God, that You have fed us at Your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send Your Spirit with us now that we may set the captive free Use your gifts to build one another up. And in everything, reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you and the holy angels accompany you. And the blessing of Almighty God The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.